Hey, this is Mike with Ruling Note Music, and today I'm going to go over part of this little app available on Behringer's website called Live Sessions. For those who don't know, this video is a follow-up to an earlier video I did about converting X32 and M32 multitrack sessions recorded on SD card using Studio One. Now, I've since learned a lot that I will clear up as we go, but I've set timestamps for those who want to skip to the good parts. Chapters are in the video description. Okay, here we go. So for those who haven't already, to do all of this, you need an X32 or M32 multitrack session recorded to SD card. Your SD card needs to be formatted in FAT32 before it can be used on the X32 and M32. Behringer says your card needs to be 32 gigabytes max, but there are ways around that that I'll get to a little later. Now, assuming you have a session on an SD card, if you have a card slot on your computer, you can extract the session straight off the card, or you can copy the session over to an internal drive. Now that we have our folder with everything here, we get to open it up in live sessions. To do that, click your folder icon and find where your folder is located. Highlight your folder or double click to open it and hit the select folder button. Now our session is loaded up. Across the top, you can see the session details, name of the session, date and time, length of the recording, number of marker points, number of channels, and sample rate. To the far right is the Extract button, which will highlight when you start selecting tracks. The first main section below the top is the Channels section. From here, you can select which channels you want to extract. This is especially useful if your session didn't need to include every channel and you don't want extra blank files you have to delete as soon as you're done. If you know you used all the tracks, there are All and Clear buttons to the left. As far as this block of channels goes, you will only see eight 16 or 32 channels in this portion because those are the only file options on the X32 and M32. It's not that big of a deal though because you can select any or all of the channels you want to extract as well as skip tracks you don't want to. If you make a mistake and forget one, you can go back and extract only that channel. This is honestly a big help if you've been extracting your sessions the way I showed you in my previous video. With that method, there was no option to skip extracting tracks that had nothing recorded on them. It saves a ton of cleanup time after you're finished, and if you use the same markers, which I will get to next, the time should line right up. Underneath Channels is the Markers section. There are always at least two markers in this section for the beginning and end of the recording. If, during your session, you placed a marker, you can select any region between any two markers and you will only extract that portion of time. All and clear buttons are here as well. All right, so now we've selected our channels and our markers and we're ready to extract the session. The extract button in the top right window is now highlighted, but before we do that, you may wanna to go to the left-hand side and name your session. We can keep the jumble name here and rename later if we want or change it now. We have a whopping nine characters to do this here, but we can always rename the folder outside the program. Once we hit the Extract button, we're asked to select or create a folder where the files go to. Then we hit Select Folder just like before and let it do its thing. Now while Live Sessions is breaking these files up, I'm going to go over a couple things. First, Behringer says that your SD card needs to be 32 gigabytes max in order to work, but that's not exactly the case. This is because when the firmware was being developed, FAT32 was the only format that didn't require purchasing a license for the board to be compatible with. Now, by default, with small physical size media like SD cards and flash drives, 32 gigabytes is the largest size that is formatted to FAT32. Once you get higher than that, you will see most media drives are formatted to NTSC format. A big benefit of this is that it allows file sizes larger than four gigabytes each. However, if you plug an NTSC format drive into either the SD card slot or even the USB media port on top of the mixer, Either the board won't recognize it, or it may even freak out and freeze. I've had both of these things happen to me. But this is mainly just because the NTSC format cannot be read by the X32. Interestingly though, there are ways of forcing FAT32 format on larger cards than 32 gigabytes. The cards I use are Samsung 128 gig cards formatted to FAT32, and I haven't found any problems with using them yet but I'm personally wary about going any higher than this size. Besides, you get somewhere near 10 hours of 32 channel recording time with two 128 gig cards, so I consider that to be plenty for myself. If you wanna see me put a video on how I formatted these larger cards to FAT32 to use with the X32 boards, 
Go ahead and leave me a like and comment down below. Next, even though the actual full multi-track WAV files are formatted in 32-bit float, the actual recording format of the channels inside the files are 24-bit, which I didn't know until recently. I don't know why this is. It could possibly be that 32-bit float is the only way all this multi-track data can be saved, or that the extra space is saving data other than just dynamic range and a format proprietary to Behringer, but this means that if you extract using Studio One or another DAW, you should down-convert your raw tracks to 24-bit to save space. All of those extra bits that would create the 32-bit float format don't have anything in them, so you wouldn't be losing anything if you actually converted down to 24-bit. All right, so now that the session is extracted, we can open up the folder and take a look at these new files. The first thing you'll notice is these files are all named by their session and channel. Unfortunately, any extra data that's in the mix profile is not added to these files. Now, if you haven't already, like I said previously, I'd recommend having a copy of the mix profile you used backed up so that you can use your mixer or the X32 edit app to reference your tracks. From here, you should be able to load up the files into your DAW of choice and mix to your heart's content. After verifying you have all your files in order, congratulations, you have now successfully converted your X32 multi-track session. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. I'll have another video on the other main feature of Live Sessions soon, which is creating a multi-track session file from individual WAV files to use on the X32. If you want to know when that drops, subscribe to my channel. Once again, this is Mike from Ruling Note Music reminding you to never compromise your sound.